Hey guys, True Grit Scott, Bulletproof Saws and BlueSaws.com. Hope everybody's doing all right. I'm gonna try to make a real quick video. Uh, I kind of ran out of time quicker than I wanted to today. But uh, I, I was in the back there, and I don't know, maybe the video's even gonna catch it, but back there is some dead ash trees that have been around. So we knocked a couple of them down. I got a few more of them to go, and none of them are great, but it's firewood that's not real far away not too bad to get to so we ran the skid steer back there with the forks to grab the logs and it's just it's still muddy back there and i, I grabbed a few of them and then instead of fighting the skid steer and getting it stuck i figured i'd come back and make a quick video and i got some other projects to do anyway i got a few saws i gotta run they're going out to customers this week i got a uh, 660 with the big bore kit that we like real well. A lot of folks like this build. Highway heavy duty handle, triple ported muffler, all the other odds and ends we've talked about in other videos that we've done to it. I got a 372 Pro. It's got a modded muffler, timing advanced, squish adjusted, and the cylinder was flowed a little bit. So we're going to see how that runs. Haven't gotten a chance to put that in wood at all. That one I had in wood for two minutes the other day when I first built it. I got a, uh, maybe you can't see because I'm probably blocking it. I got a Bulletproof 366. You guys know the story on that. And I thought for fun, I've been using that Husky 357 XP for a bunch of different stuff. And that's a direct competitor to the 361. You know, 57 cc's versus 59 cc, same class of saws. So I thought it'd be neat to run because that 357 is a smoking little 357. I mean, it's a super duper nice saw. It's running 325 chain on an 18 or a 20. So yeah, it doesn't have the bar that the 366 does, but I figured it'd be good to run them together anyway. The one thing I will say is I didn't do that chain originally on that 357. And those rakers, you know, you have your hardwood setting, you have your softwood setting, and then you have 20 thousandths lower and that chain is 20 thousandths lower so that chain is wicked aggressive this uh piece of ash seems i mean it's, it's a nice hard dry piece so we'll see how it cuts on this i got another piece back here and i don't know how that is so I, i'll give it a try i threw some logs on the back of it because i was just dumping them off the forks over here and it was janky not thinking of a video I will grab the camera real quick and I'll show you these saws up close real quick then we'll get into just some cutting. I'm not racing saws here. I'm not doing anything crazy. Let me pause you so I don't jerk you all over trying to move you around. All right, there's that 660. They're a good looking saw. And you can see the extra port on the muffler. I don't like the pipes out the front. I think you lose that pushback for the charge. So I much prefer a side vent on it when you can. Here's that 372 Pro. Got a little fancy with the pipe on that one. You know, the 366, you've seen these before. This is actually the first batch where I used silver solder on them instead of the brass brazing rods. And I want to see if that's going to not give me that flux migrating out. And there's that little 357. It's got a dual port on it. Came with that muffler. It's not a bad muffler. Again, I'd rather have a side port than those two front ones. But she's in pretty nice shape for an old 357. Uh, what else did I want to show you on these? I don't know if there's anything else worth showing you. I mean, they're saws. Oh, you guys like my fancy silver West Coast style clutch cover? That's mine. <laughs> that doesn't go with the saw. But it's one thing I can keep clean. I don't know. Probably nothing else to see on these. I'll pause you again, talk to you, and then start up some saws. So the other thing I'm going to tell you is I should have a sharp chain on the, I sharpened the chains. I believe the 660's got a fresh chain. The 372 has a freshly sharpened chain. The other two saws had freshly sharpened chains. And then as I was doing those trees, I grabbed them and I'm cutting, well, some of them other logs are on the ground in the mud. They should be reasonably sharp half a gallon through either of those saws with the chain so yeah it's not a freshly sharpened chain but they should be pretty good and like I said that 357 is going to be aggressive I don't know what to run first I'm going to run that 660 first and then I'll pause you and we'll just swap out and listen guys I'm not racing saws nothing's set up the same 
what's tuned was tuned for two minutes when I ran them the other day and I don't even have a tuning screwdriver in my pocket. So it's just something to run and compare a couple different classes of saws just for fun. Pause you, I'll get something started. taking the camera the tripod down I'm just not doing it guys what I will wind up doing is taking this this is a 24 inch bar on this one too um, I got and actually I have some hickory right here I could probably do it with and it's fresh pig nut hickory I'll wind up cutting a couple blocks off of it long enough for the bar and noodle it just because then I could bury the whole bar dog in a little bit. I only got one dog on it because I ship it without the inner dog on it. And that way, I don't know, I like noodling. But beyond liking noodling, I like to get the bars buried. This is some tough dry ash though. I can feel it as I'm going through it. This is, I hate to waste it on cookies, although I'll burn them too, but it's going to be nice firewood. And if the, I hope the rest of it's as good because there was one ash tree that I knocked down in the bunch. And I didn't look at it real hard. I knocked it down. I could see it was crappy. And it went down. And went, didn't crack when it hit the ground. Didn't, didn't sound like dry wood. Sounded like a waterlogged piece of trash. Anyhow, I'm only cutting them down anyway because they're risky. I will start up another saw. Pause you guys for a second. I'll start up another one and go from there. I don't know how to do it better than this, guys. some more but again it's a brand new oh i'm getting attacked on my legs you can't see it by this multi-floral rose so the problem with some of these ash trees that are standing back there you get to hear me bitching is uh not only are they dead dangerous ash trees but growing around them so you have a tree and then around it you have eight feet of multi-floral rose and i don't know if you don't live in an area where there's multi-floral rose. It's the worst noxious weed you can imagine. It's some type of rose, but it gets little white flowers. They smell wonderful in the spring, but the thorns on it will cut you. 
and they send out shoots everywhere. So there's multi-floral rose shoots everywhere. And if you get hooked by one, it digs in immediately. It, it, and they hurt. They'll get you good. They'll get you bleeding, bleeding. And when you do that and you move, a couple of the other tentacles will come and get you. I mean, they're a nasty, nasty plant. So before we got to some of them, I probably could have took the skitter, put the bucket on instead of the forks and maybe drug it out of there. Just went in with this, had the kid going with the string trimmer and blah, 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 blast some of it just so I had, you know, escape paths when I was knocking down those trees that I'm not in love with doing to begin with. Anyhow, guys, I'm not going to talk to you about the multi floor rows, but it's around here. Oh, and to make it even worse, half the trees got poison ivy vines growing up them. Anyhow, I'll get the next saw running. been using not this one but another one for all my firewood my felling my everything lately and geez I don't see a reason why you know with a lot of basic firewood stuff where you know they're smaller logs was you know they're not huge stuff I don't have a reason to run a 72 inch or a 72 cc saw I'll run you know, 59 cc saw and save a couple pounds of weight. I'm getting old. I'm tired, guys. Uh, next saw is going to be that 357, and I got to be careful because I said that chain is ridiculously grabby. And now I'm getting close. Like I'm hitting the knot already because I felt it on this one as I'm running. And I'm going to hit it more, so it, it's not totally fair at the beginning of this cut how that cuts because that's a smoking little saw. I love it. I'll take every every. 346 XP, 353, 357, 359 that I can find in good condition. I'll take them. I take them in on trades every chance I get just because I, I guess I started with saws when the Husky 346 came out. Didn't have a 346, had a 350. So that started me. So I have some kind of affinity to that model of saw that I really like it. it, it it's my thing. You know, you like what you start with, I guess. Uh, I'll pause you guys and run that last saw real quick for fun. Just a goofy messing around video.
fight with that to get it started, choke rod popped out, so it wasn't choking, and then I had to fiddle with a screwdriver to get it to choke, and by then it, you know, I'm 30 pulls in to getting it to start. Anyhow, you can see that that chain's aggressive, and I don't know if you can see it on video, but the chain is so aggressive, I, I, it, it chatters through. So, it, not the best test for the saw, and I know you guys could hear that. It's tuned up, it's a broken in saw. So it's, you know, at the RPMs, maybe it could have more, but it's, you know, running more RPMs probably than any of the other saws. And I don't know, I love those 357s. The three series Huskies, not counting the 372, I do love the 372, but I mean the, the 346 to the 359 I love. And there's just something about them. And I don't know if that cut a ton slower, faster. I don't think it was faster. But the 325 chain, it's, it's just overly aggressive. The way it was sharp, the way the rakers were taken down on that chain. So it, it's throwing great chips and it's sucking into the wood. I mean, it's... I don't mind running it. I don't have to have the smoothest chain all the time for bucking wood and sometimes it's nice to let them rip. I couldn't dog in overly hard and I actually took swipes on that to try to get it to catch up to the rakers but I'm not there yet. It was still, I'm telling you, 20 thousands. More than 20 thousands. 40 thousands low. I mean, the, the chain was, the rakers were real low. Lower than they should have been even on a softwood setting. But again, it's fun and the, and the saw can do it. You know, I told you it was a 18 or a 20. What is this? Yeah, that's a 20. It's just those 325 bars are a little bit shorter. It always throws me off. Well, that's a couple saws. And again, I'm not racing. I'm not comparing. I'm not saying what's better. All I'm saying is, is we got to do 57 cc's, 59 cc's, 72 cc's, and 90 six cc's with the big bore on it and just to get an idea when those saws are broken in they'll get tuned up a little bit more they're saws guys i like playing with them i get to do my firewood i get to knock trees down you know we have a good time doing this the other thing i wanted to tell you guys and i didn't realize sometimes i think some farmer tech stuff is common knowledge i guess because i'm so immersed in farmer tech that oh uh, yeah known about that for a year and other people don't. One of the things I mentioned, and it, and it surprised Kevin Smith over at Chainsaw Repair on Facebook, that Farmer Tech's doing away with the blue color and saws. The 660 is gonna be available in blue. The, supposedly the 440, but I'm not seeing it in the catalog, so not sure about that. And then a, they have one or two others, and I think it's they're getting rid of the old stock on them. Maybe they had a whole bunch of some of the less popular models but the blue saws are going away you know you're not going to find blue 372s anymore you're not going to find blue 366s anymore and it's funny because i have customers who want the blue prefer the blue they like clone saws they like blue and they're going to be gone it's going to be the orange and gray or in the 372 it's going to be the full orange so it's going to be a change but just so you guys know if you didn't the blues the blue color is going away what else did i have to tell you guys i don't have an update on the the g266 the ms260 clone they were supposed to be re-released in october they were changing some of the manufacturing on it they i actually thought those were decent little saws not the best not the worst but apparently they had some kind of quality control uh, other farmer tech news i don't know if they're fighting with hlic because there's been a, a, a dearth of HLIC carbs on stuff. And I'm actually going to make some updates where I see like the G466s are coming in with trash ass carbs. You know, they come in two different ways with the Anaconda carb, which is garbage. And then the no name one, which is half garbage. So the HLICs, I'm not seeing as much. I am seeing HLICs more often on 44 still. Maybe it depends on what pile of saws they're picking them from and sending them. I don't know. That's probably all my news for the day, guys. This video is longer than I expected, as always, and nothing earth-shattering, but we get to mess with saws, so life's good. True Grit Scott, Bulletproof Saws, and BlueSaws.com. Thanks for watching, and stay safe.
goddamn multi-floor rose. Keeps grabbing me.